Ansela, I'm from Tafwa, and I love to listen to today FM, today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton, I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Ulonila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Raki Raki. I'm Mary from Mandera, I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Good evening, I'm Amrit Priya Darshni and this is FPC News. Tonight, commercial and industrial waste blamed for stink at Kenoya Wastewater Treatment Plant, Water Authority, to introduce penalties. 18-year-old hospitalized after jumping out of moving vehicle driven by her teacher who allegedly refused to stop. An alleged attempted murder victim dies. Now, commercial and industrial waste has been identified by the Water Authority of Fiji as one of the major causes of the unpleasant odour from the Kenoya Wastewater Treatment Plant. Authority Chief Executive Opatea Ravai says some companies have been dumping waste like fat and grease from restaurants as well as waste petroleum from vehicle repair garages. Ali Kimbia has more. The continuous dumping of commercial and industrial waste has prompted the Water Authority of Fiji to compile bylaws on trade waste to ensure the pretreatment of wastewater as well as penalties for non-compliance. This is the responsibility we're pushing back to the industries now, that you need to take care of your trade waste. Uh, you need to invest in pretreatment and uh, hopefully when the trade waste policy becomes uh, law, then you know, people will comply. Currently, UF officials working at the plant use a type of gas to minimize the spread of the stink to surrounding areas. However, residents living nearby are calling for immediate action to eradicate the odor problems. Sector is now, the thing, uh, like the smell is getting worse now. Uh, uh, but uh, we don't know uh, what happens to the sewerage plant out there, uh, how the thing is uh, smelling. Government should come and sit, sit down here and uh, about one or two hours then they cannot get how, how the thing smells. Ravai says they are trying their best to minimize the odors. To be permanently fixed, like I said, it will take a few years, eh? take a couple of years, because we need to build some uh, infrastructure to mitigate against this. Short term, like I said, we are dosing, you know, we are disludging. The Water Authority of Fiji continues to conduct educational awareness to companies who produce liquid trade waste and as a result, 10 companies have taken responsibility of treating their own liquid trade waste. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The victim of an alleged murder attempt has died. Police have confirmed Bal Krishna Reddy died yesterday. Reddy's partner, Marianne Pramila Devi, allegedly burnt him last Thursday after a domestic dispute. He was later admitted to hospital, while Davy was arrested and appeared in the Sinu court on Tuesday and was remanded until December 2nd. A year 13 student in Lambasa is in hospital after she jumped off a moving vehicle in Lambasa yesterday. It's alleged the girl jumped after the driver of the vehicle, her teacher, refused to stop at her destination. Eleanor Turangaviu with the details. 18-year-old Aniza Din, a year 13 student of All Saints Secondary School in Lambasa, is lucky to be alive after jumping out of a moving vehicle yesterday afternoon. She was returning home after visiting her sister at Vulovi when her school teacher stopped by the road here and offered to drop her off at home. She went and then after like 20 minutes the teacher came back to me and he said, you her sister? And I said yes. And then... He said a problem has occurred and I asked him what happened and he said uh, your sister jumped out of the car and like I was shocked. According to police, the 42-year-old teacher allegedly failed to stop at Dean's destination and tried to persuade her to go for a ride. An 8 okay man following them became suspicious 
after noticing the passenger door opening and closing several times. When I reached that coconut tree, I saw her jump out of the car right at this spot. I stopped on the side of the road and ran to her. The car that she was in didn't stop. She was bleeding heavily. I then carried her to a house that side and shouted for someone to call the police. Din was then rushed to hospital where she is currently admitted with injuries to her back, her arms, hands and her head. The teacher came back and then told her not to go with me as I would report the matter to police and that he was willing to drop her off at home. I chased him away from here. We trusted him and we put her in the car because most of the time she stays in the school and stays with the teachers. Eh? But now we don't trust the teachers. The Dean family is still shocked over the incident and the Ministry of Education and Fiji Police Force are both investigating the case. Eleanor Turangiwiu, FBC News. Illegal logging is becoming rife in many parts of Vanuelevu, especially in Bua. As Eleanor Turangiwiu reports, illegal loggers continue to find their way into Fiji Pine Limited leases to steal pine logs. Fiji Pine Limited is the biggest lease tenant in Fiji, leasing approximately 84,000 hectares of land. Operations manager Asisela Dokanadangi says one of their biggest challenge is illegal logging. What is even more worrying for Fiji Pine Limited is the slow investigation process by police in a number of cases filed before them. Our interpretation in this case is similar you know, to somebody who forcefully enter your house and steal your TV set. And when you report it to police, they say that the case is weak. Please, this is purely theft. It's daylight robbery. The most recent case was in July when a team from Fiji Pine Limited discovered this pine in Kumbula Umbua, felled by a private sawmiller and being transported to their mill. A total of 5.1 hectares were logged with an estimated log volume of 2,244 tons, valued at $291,720. We have reported the incidents in August this year to the police station in Sabu Sabu, and nothing has happened until now. From what we, they have said is that the, 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 the case is weak, and even after we have provided them with clear evidence, they still haven't bring those involved in court. Following three separate illegal logging cases this year, Fiji Pine Limited invested in a vehicle to patrol its leased land in order to deter illegal loggers. This is just one of the many cases out there which people walking in and illegally fell pine trees within Fiji Pine Lease. They haven't been reported and they still cannot bring those responsible to justice. Fiji Pine Limited has around 20,000 hectares of leases in Bonolevu alone. It takes 22 to 25 years for pine log to mature for saw log processing. Eleanor Turangaiwiu, FBC News. Now, police told FBC News last night the investigation in the pine theft cases at Kumbulao is still underway and it's taking time as there is a lot of work involved. An outcome is expected in two weeks' time. The relocation of communities in Fiji due to the severe effects of climate change has been a complex process for the Fijian government. Permanent Secretary for Economy Makareta Konrote says this is because they have to ensure food security as well as other cultural aspects to allow communities to re-establish in a sustainable manner. Kelly Vadala reports. Over the last three years, three villages in Vanua Levu have been relocated. Government is now in the process of relocating the fourth community that has been adversely affected by rising sea level. So with the support of the EU and GICN, the Fijian government is now in the process of relocating a fourth community, Narikoso village in Kandavo, again due to severe inundation and of the village during uh, high tide. So relocating these communities is a complex process that needs to be treated with the due care it deserves. Director for Fiji Climate Change Unit of Vini Rolulu says relocation is a costly exercise. Relocating a full community costs up to $1.5 million. It's a consultative process that uh, at the end of the day the community needs to decide that it wants to move. We won't be staying there, the community will be living there. So it's a process of consultation. When they decide, and then the machinery of government working with the partners, we support them, make that uh, transition. 
Rolulu spoke at a climate change induced workshop in Siva today that included participants from around the region. Fiji presented on draft relocation guidelines that is currently being developed through comprehensive stakeholder consultations. Kelly Vavella, FBC News. Coming up on FPC News, farmers encouraged to grow more pulses. And Miss World Fiji off to Washington. Stay with us. Hi, my name is Liviana Valentine. I'm from Nandi and Today FM rocks. My name is Ateva. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Krish. I'm from Tava. I like listening to Big Breakfast. Today FM rocks. I'm Juliana, I'm from Nautoka and I like, I like listening to Today FM. Hi, my name is Shelly, I live in Arere. Today FM rocks my drug and lollipop. Bula, my name is So, I'm from Navua. I like listening to Today's FM. Bula, my name is Asilika from Rocky Rocky and Today FM rocks with my fifth flops. Today's hit music on Today FM. Welcome back, you with FPC News. The global launch of a new app called InstaCharge will take place in Suva tomorrow. InstaCharge app founder Douglas Stewart says the application is especially useful now as we enter into a more modernized world where the use of smartphones has expanded communication. Stewart today signed an agreement with InstaCharge Arabia for 22 Middle Eastern countries to use the app and also with the Fijian global entrepreneur Garung Bhai Patel. The launch will be held at the Grand Pacific Hotel tomorrow. You know, the InstaCharge app was created from a uh, nat natural disaster. Um, back in 2012, uh, Hurricane Sandy hit the New York area. Uh, sent a signal to your cell phone, uh, you know, by satellite. That didn't work. <laughs> Eventually, uh, we came to the stage of, um, you know, to um, accept, store, and release energy back into your phone. The United Nations has declared 2016 the year of the pulses. Pulses are beans, peas and lentils. And farmers from the Western Division gathered at the Lenga Lenga Research Station today to commemorate this day. Ellen Stoltz reports. Farmers are being encouraged to grow more pulses because of its nutritional value. Pulses are locally adapted and can be grown by local farmers for sale in food source. Pulses because of their nitrogen fixing and soil fertility improvement property properties also impact food security. Jitendra Singh says the plants are ideal as they are drought tolerant, can improve crop yield and limit the long-term threat to food security that soil degradation presents. The Agriculture Ministry says that Fiji imports close to $5 million worth of pulses every year. Upon closer inspection, most of these varieties can be grown by our local farmers right here in Fiji. Many farmers here have already seen the difference that pulses make. I'm uh, doing a, a long bean and bora farming and uh, this is the main for nitrogen eh, that uh, makes the soil rich and today I'm very happy to come here and I've learned plenty of things here. Ten of these farmers were also given seeds that have been donated by the government of India to assist them in their rehabilitation process following tropical cyclone Winston. Ellen Stahls, FPC News. A joint approach is needed to build resilient communities in the Pacific region. Director of the SPC, Wolf Kilman, opened a two-day climate change-induced relocation workshop in Suva today to tackle this issue. Kelly Vadala reports. Migration and relocation is a climate change risk strategy. Deputy Director of SPC Audrey Omoa says the discussions over the next few days will highlight the importance of keeping the global light on this issue. Human displacement and planned migration is expected to rise both globally and also in our region. Displacement is of course already happening inside our own countries. Participants representing different island nations will exchange views on relocation and its effects. It's an opportunity for us to, to share our experience in this area of work and also to learn from other countries in the region. Fiji is helping to set an example for Pacific Island nations worldwide to prepare and follow the guidelines of climate change adaptation. A guidelines of how planned relocation is going to happen both for the migrants and also for the receiving countries. Fiji 
with the guidelines they have for migration, and I'm. Um, yeah, I'm happy to learn experience and bring it back home. More than 40 participants from the Pacific region attended the climate change induced relocation workshop today in hopes to share the experiences of climate change from their individual countries and come up with solutions that will reduce its impacts. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. Fiji has the potential to be among the best in the world when it comes to the film industry. This was highlighted last night by, by Attorney General Ayas Sayed Kayum while launching the long-awaited film Moana. Anna Ravulo has more. Lue, 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 lue. The premiere of Moana was enjoyed by hundreds of people last night. Showcasing Fijian canoes, the Walt Disney animated film is everything Pacific. The fact that they did come out and do a recce in Fiji, and we've got uh, Morrison here. Um, we hope that you'll also become an ambassador for us too. Uh, enjoy yourself in Fiji, but also to tell the film industry outside Fiji uh, what potential we have. Also features music from Fiji's very own Pacific Voices, led by composer Iglesi Ede. This Disney Moana will encourage more filmmakers and even ourselves to make more stories about ourselves so we can reflect it back to our tamariki and to our own children and make them feel proud, feel proud about being Fijian. Miss World Fiji Puja Priyanka leaves Fiji tonight to participate in the 2016 Miss World pageant at the Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center in National Harbor, USA. Representing Fiji, Priyanka says she is looking forward to showcasing Fiji's culture and values. She says she will showcase Fijian culture through her costume, dance and music. Fiji is currently sixth on the blog competition. The Miss World pageant begins this Saturday. I hope I can showcase, you know, our great, great culture and our great passion for people and, you know, humility and humbleness and courage and, you know, also share our story about, you know, T.C. Winston as well and um, make sure that, you know, everyone gets, you know, equal, equal um, coverage um, in terms of, you know, the global scale really. So I'm really looking forward to sharing that story. Now with the latest in sports, here's Jamie. Thanks, Amrita, and good evening in sports after the break. Seventh team, the pass for first leg of World Series. And FRU to award top achievers. This and more coming up. My name is Siobhan. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Mercy FM. Kyoki Mercy FM is number one in music. Mercy FM is hot. I am Suresh Chand, Vaituri Nasuri Se Bolta Hoon. Jaisi Aak Kholti Hai, Mirchi FM Mujhe Mast Kar Diti. I am Viren from Zambula. Mirchi FM is for. My name is Rizwan Khan. Hi, and my name is Mohamed Sofyan. Fatou Bahe, and Mirchi FM is for. My name is Vishal Maharaj. I am Mookie Polo Sintan Kaushal Esa Maka Mastan. I love you to Mirchi FM. It's for. With big shoes to temporarily fill, Fiji 7's interim coach Nathaniel Idhwanimbuka is making sure all boxes are ticked ahead of the first leg of the World 7 Series. And while history has proved that the team that starts well ends victorious, the side left Fiji today with an eagerness to get the series off to a good start. Rohit Deo reports. Nathaniel Idhwanimbuka has huge shoes to fill, but he isn't shying away from the challenge. The interim coach has set some personal goals and knows too well what's at stake. My personal goal remains the same, you know, to do the best I can and bring the best out of the place. Um, we've managed to improve the fitness levels, you know, to the necessary levels we would like to have at the start of this series, uh, which is good. And, um, and you know, making those, um, doing those extra yards in the, in the analysis uh, back room, you know, looking at the positions that we're playing and uh, the personnel we have in our ranks. In the last two series that Fiji won, the team registered victories in the first tournament. The one in Buka is confident this will not change. You know, or if you look at the trend uh, in the World Series um, back in the years, the, the team that starts well ends up winning the whole series. Uh, starts well and remains consistent. So we've been, you know, we've been blessed. We've, we've started uh, the two series that we've won back to back. We've actually won the first tournament. Team manager Ropateko Vesi says the officials have done their part and now it's the players' turn to deliver. Basically, the last. Uh Five weeks of training. Uh, you know, it's a short it's a short time for training in, in the overall scheme of things, building up to the the World Series. But 
you know, the, the boys, they've had their programs for a while. So coming into camp, uh, it, it worked well for Nadar. The team will be in Qatar for three days as the chief guest of a seventh tournament before they depart for Dubai. The first tournament in the series kicks off next Friday and you can watch it live on FBC TV. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, Team Captain Osei Polini believes the changes to rules in the World 7 Series will benefit Fiji. Yeah, I think it will work uh, better for us because, uh, you know, we like to play the game at a high tempo and uh, setting up times and uh, for penalty and giving them time is just uh, making uh, teams play faster rather than, you know, uh, most of the team use it as a tool to eat up time, kick and take one minute to walk the line up, take one minute to kick for goal and jog back and... I think it will play really good with uh, us because we like the game to be much faster. And of course you can watch the entire tournament live on FBC TV. The Fiji Rugby Union has announced its first Fiji Rugby Awards Night to be held next month at the Novotel in Lamy. With the theme celebrating Fiji's best, nine main awards will be presented to outstanding figures in Fiji Rugby. Meli Tavanga has the details. For the first time in Fiji's history, the best of Fiji rugby will be celebrated on the 16th of next month. There are nine awards recognizing players of the year in sevens male and female, fifteens male and female, primary and secondary schools, best coach, best team, best rugby administrator of the year. Also up for grabs is a Lifetime Achievement Award to someone who has been a great ambassador for Fijian rugby. The goal of the Fiji Rugby Awards Night is to celebrate Fiji's best rugby talent and supporters. The awards night will also engage the local community through the Vodafone People's Choice Awards, which offer the public an opportunity to vote for their favorite national men's 15s, 7s and domestic player and coach. The uh, text, uh, People's Choice uh, text has uh, five categories, I'm not wrong, how many? Five categories, and there will be four nominees in uh, each category. So uh, we, will, we have some very, sure, some very exciting names to, to vote. Uh, we encourage everyone to participate. The FRU Awards Night is a historic event where the FRU and all rugby loving fanatics will honor players and administrations who have contributed immensely to the growth of the sport in the country. Meli Tabanga, FBC Sports. Marika Kuroimbete will make his professional rugby, rugby union debut tomorrow morning after being named to start in the Wallaby 15s team against the French Barbarians. The Fiji men's beach volleyball team won the central zone competition yesterday, beating Australia in the final. Fiji successfully defended its title, winning two sets to one. The home side was represented by Inia Korowale and Gilu Elliott. Meanwhile, the Oceania Championships are underway at the same venue today. The Fiji Rugby Union has made it clear to FBC Sports that local players who receive offers to take up overseas club contracts should refer to the FRU for assistance. This is after the Telegraph reported on how the welfare of Pacific Island players is being neglected in rugby's gold rush, which is believed to be a co cont contributing factor to Israeli Temu's death in France last week. Fijiana 15's coach Sermaya Mbai, whose comments were published in the article, said that some agents will skim up to 50% of a client's wages, but when things do go wrong, they suddenly become uncontactable. In response to the article, FRU Chairman Francis Keane says it is important for local players to take this seriously yeah. and seek help from the FRU before committing to an overseas Just contract. Fiji Rugby Union, our advice always is to all rugby players that depart for overseas is to come and see the Chief Executive Office of Fiji Rugby Union. He will advise them, have a look at their rugby contract and see what's best for them and what's best for Fiji Rugby. That's sports for this evening. Sunny spells with light winds was the order of the day across most parts of the country today. Taking a look at temperatures, in Lombasa was the warmest at 33 degrees, while Nandi, Lotoka and Ba trailed at 32. The rest remained at, at ease in the lower 30s. For tomorrow, few sprinkles is in line for the northern areas of Fiji, while the east will remain dry. 
And looking further on to Saturday, clouds will develop overnight, which could lead to more showers in the northern areas. Temperatures will be a bit cooler than the last few days. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, easing 15 to 20 knots from tomorrow, and rough seas are expected as well. Recapping the main stories. Commercial and industrial waste blame for stink at Kinoya Wastewater Treatment Plant, Water Authority, to introduce penalties. 18-year-old hospitalized after jumping out of moving vehicle driven by her teacher who allegedly refused to stop. An alleged attempted murder victim dies. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. So our poll question now, and this week we are asking, are you happy to see Choeli Lutumai Langi back in the National Sevens Vault? To answer, visit our FBC website. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email. Citizens eyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us those news tips at FBC News or hashtag FBC News. That was news tonight. Good evening. And I read of Fiji one. And don't be with you, but won't be in Saza Labina, we are the Wailenani, Wainbono, with a Tormena or Roy Sasa, Lemon Gotawatag in Gitaumata, Mantoraviana, read of Fiji one. I will go one with an animus. Nisambula and Elango are finished at my coro and a cassi of the Wagaro and a radio Fiji one, won't be in Radio Fiji one, and don't be with you, won't be in